Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and there will be no gameplay footage in this video once again for what will be very obvious reasons. I never thought I would find myself in this sort of position, let alone finding myself in the same position multiple times within a single year. For the majority of 2017, I have found my channel mixed up in some fairly crazy controversies. Dintola Studios, for fun, Digital Homicide and their attempted lawsuit of 100 Steam users, Silicon Echo, Berdiev of BC Interactive, Andrew Watt, and Alex Maurer. It is a list of battles that were hard fought and won, mostly thanks to the viewers of this channel and of larger YouTubers who helped out when they saw that the need was great and the cause just. I have always stood up for what I've believed in, and I have always done my best to correct mistakes and errors when I made them, because let's face it, I'm not perfect. As a result of all of this, I have made a lot of enemies. All of those previous individuals, plus many others who would all love to see me fail, and unfortunately, there are some who are actively trying to make that happen and are actively organizing others with a grudge against my channel in order to enlist their aid, even on a temporary basis. And of course, I'm speaking about Andrew Watt yet again, the person who is a bad penny for my channel that keeps turning up. Now, this all started with a video I posted in regards to Andrew's game Blood of Old. In that video, I outlined Andrew's despicable actions of making use of a vote for key system in order to boost his title through Steam's Greenlight. He then was unable to take criticism over his inability to actually design the game and took it down, only to post a new Blood of Old early access title in its place several months later. In relation to his inability to handle criticism, Watt was extremely abusive to his customer base and even threatened a defamation lawsuit against one individual. As a result of my video, Watt did everything he could to backpedal and come across as someone who was nowhere near as toxic as he was and issued what I called a non-apology, an apology where he never actually apologized for any of his wrongdoing. He then proceeded to file a spurious DMCA strike on my video and threatened me with a defamation lawsuit. And as he was unable to get the DMCA to stick, he opted then to continue doing whatever he could to damage my channel and issued privacy complaints against all four of the videos I'd done in regards to that topic. And as I've been informed, Watt convinced Alex Maurer to file a privacy complaint against my channel as well for using their full names within my videos something that would be impossible not to do in either case as the Alex Maurer situation. Maurer did not have an online handle to go by, and this was a legal matter. And in the case with Andrew Watt, well, he literally branded everything under the sun online with his first and last name, Steam profile, Twitter profile, and contact name for his talent agency EGC Network that was, up until recently, an MCN partner of Scale Lab, who terminated their association with Watt when they caught wind of how he was behaving. But why? What was the purpose of the privacy violation strikes, or the attempts to file them to begin with? The purpose is in fact tied to the YouTube community guidelines. You see, privacy violations are supposed to count against a channel much in the same way a DMCA strike will, where if you receive three strikes, then your YouTube channel will be terminated, again, just as with the DMCA strike system. And in addition to Watt attempting to orchestrate my channel's termination via invalid privacy complaints, Andrew Watt had alluded to a third individual who has apparently developed a bot that will make hundreds of Sid Alpha Twitter accounts. The reason for this is that their aim is for Twitter having dealt with this sort of thing in the past by apparently deleting all of the accounts involved, including the original legitimate account. This is even more dangerous for YouTube content creators as, in this case, there is no legality to question. YouTube reserves the right to make their own judgments in these matters, and the initial verdict in the case of the Andrew Watt false privacy complaints is that they wish to uphold it on two of the four videos. Even though Andrew Watt used his full name on business-related public accounts and made no effort to disguise his identity, nor does it matter that the use of his name in those instances was journalistic in nature. Even using the name Andrew Watt now in this video, according to that one YouTube employee, is a privacy violation. So here I am, sitting here wondering if a completely abhorrent and despicable individual might actually manage to abuse the system to the point where my channel and my Twitter feed might get taken offline. Now I'm not going to lie, thanks to YouTube's very well-known proclivities in the past, my channel's continued existence is not assured. I am reaching out to every YouTube and Twitter contact I have, but I don't know what will happen next. And I hate doing this sort of thing, but I would ask each and every one of you to please share this video. Ask other content creators to talk about it. Ask them to share it on as well. Because if Watt manages to fulfill his aims and shut my channel down, 
then I would rather he not profit from his actions. Also, other content creators should be made aware of these dangers, as this could quite easily be the next plane of attack for those wishing to harm other channels in a similar fashion. And if my channel disappears sometime over the course of the next couple of weeks, then you know what happened and who was the cause. So, in the meantime, I will do my best to carry on and try to continue producing content that most of you tend to enjoy. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll hopefully see you next time.